I'm Jackson Pierce, and this video is about The Little Mermaid. So Fathomless, the third book in my fairy tale series and a companion book to Sisters Red and Sweetly, is a retelling of The Little Mermaid by Hans Christian Andersen. That's right, by Hans Christian Andersen, not by Disney. See, I was sort of dismayed to discover recently that lots of people think Disney wrote The Little Mermaid, that that was an original Disney story, when that is not the case at all. In fact, none of the Disney princess movies are original fairy tales, although I will admit that sometimes Disney has taken such liberties with the source material that they might as well be. The original version of The Little Mermaid was published in 1837 by Danish author Hans Christian Andersen. In that story, The Little Mermaid lives underwater with her father, the Sea King, her sisters, and her grandmother. When each of the mermaids turns 15, she's allowed to go to the surface and look at the human world. The Little Mermaid cannot wait until she turns 15 and she gets to do this because I guess she thinks we are much, much cooler than we actually are. When she finally turns 15 and goes to the surface, she sees this really handsome prince on a boat. But then a storm comes and knocks him off the boat and he almost drowns and the Little Mermaid has to save him. This is the point, by the way, where Disney's version takes a relatively steep departure from the original. So anyway, the Little Mermaid saves the prince, she takes him to shore, and then she leaves him there and waits until she sees a girl from a nearby temple come down and find him. The prince never sees the Little Mermaid, and therefore he assumes the girl from the temple saved him. Then the Little Mermaid gets kind of emo, and she goes to talk to her grandmother about humans. The grandmother informs the Little Mermaid that humans don't live very long, but they have an immortal soul, which will go on forever, whereas mermaids live about 300 years, but when they die, they turn into sea foam and cease to exist. All that talk of souls makes the Little Mermaid even more emo, so she decides to go see the Sea Witch. The Sea Witch gives the Little Mermaid a potion that will give her legs in exchange for the Little Mermaid's tongue. The catch is, the potion is going to hurt like hell when she drinks it, and then even though it will give her legs, whenever she walks around, it's gonna feel like knives are boring into her feet. An even bigger catch is the fact that if she drinks this potion, she can never go back to being a mermaid again, ever. If she can't get the prince to love and marry her, then the morning after he marries somebody else, she will just turn into sea foam and cease to exist. But if she can get the prince to love her and marry her, then not only will she get to stay human, but part of the prince's soul will flow into her, and then, you know, yay, she's got a soul too, bonus. So she drinks the potion, goes ashore, and meets the prince. The prince thinks she's pretty great, despite the fact that she can't talk what with the tongue being gone and all. And the Little Mermaid is pretty enamored with the prince too, so much so that she dances for him, even though, you know, the whole knife and the feet thing, so it hurts really bad. All is going pretty well until the prince's father announces that the prince is gonna have to marry the princess of a neighboring kingdom. The prince tells the Little Mermaid that it's totally not going to happen because he is in love with the girl from the temple who he thinks saved him. The Little Mermaid is pretty bummed about that, and then, to sort of add insult to injury, it turns out the girl from the temple is the princess from the neighboring kingdom, and she was just going to the temple to be educated. The prince is pretty excited about this fortunate turn of events, and so the wedding is announced. This makes the Little Mermaid sad because, you know, now she's gonna die and dissolve into sea foam all for nothing. Luckily, the night of the wedding, the Little Mermaid sisters show up with this knife that they got from the sea witch in exchange for their hair. All she has to do is stab the prince and let his blood drip on her feet and she'll turn back into a mermaid again. So the Little Mermaid creeps into the prince's bedroom, ready to stab him. And then she can't do it. She just can't do it. Distraught, the Little Mermaid throws herself into the sea, ready to become sea foam. And that's the end. Well, that's kind of the end. That was Anderson's original ending, but later he added this sort of epilogue that he claims was supposed to be the original ending all along, but either way, here you go. When the Little Mermaid throws herself into the sea and dissolves, she doesn't cease to exist, but she sort of goes up into the air and becomes a daughter of the air. The other daughters of the air tell her all she has to do is spend a while doing good deeds for humans and she'll earn her own soul and eventually get to go to heaven. She never gets the prince though, because in the original story, the prince loved someone else. There was no trick, there was no octopus lady, the prince just wasn't in love with the Little Mermaid, he was in love with the girl from the temple. That's actually what really drew me to this story, the fact that it wasn't the prince's fault, he just loved somebody else. And then this temple girl who never really gets her own story, and I, I love this theme of unrequited love, it's just so dark and dramatic and beautiful. So many fairy tales have these nice little packaged happily ever afters, and this one doesn't, and I find that kind of exciting. Now I do love Disney's The Little Mermaid, it's one of my favorite movies, the songs are incredible. I spent much of my childhood trying to make my hair do that thing that Ariel's does, you know? That and getting really low in pools and then bursting out and making my hair come back like hers does in that, that scene, you know. I was a cool kid. It doesn't bother me that Disney strayed so far from the original fairy tale. It really doesn't. What bothers me is people don't know there is an original fairy tale. And while the Disney one is great, the original is beautiful and moving and amazing in its own right. There is room for both in this world. So now you know about it, go forth and inform others so people stop thinking this was an original Disney creation, please. All right, thank you for watching and I will see you tomorrow.